Nearly five years ago, Hyundai introduced their Genesis luxury division. It has quickly become one of the hottest new luxury brands that money can buy today here in America. However, one product that the company has been sorely missing from its US lineup were crossovers. This is something that Americans tend to buy. Last year, they introduced their first crossover ever, the big GV80, which offered up to three rows of seating. Today, I'm standing with the newest crossover addition to their lineup. This is the 2022 Genesis GV70. Now, like the smaller G70 sedan, this is built off of an entirely unique rear wheel drive architecture. Under the hood, you can take a pick between two different turbocharged engines, and it has that same beautiful athletic elegance styling that we love on the GV80 SUV. So even though the new GV70 is a late addition to the compact luxury segment, has Genesis managed to introduce a player here that can challenge the best from Europe? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, I wanna interrupt this video for a brief special announcement to tell you about this amazing opportunity where you can win a brand new BMW M2 CS. That's right, the most blissful driving, high-performance BMW M car that you can buy today. The BMW M2 CS is powered by the same three liter twin power turbocharged straight six that powered the previous generation BMW M4, which means this high performance rear wheel drive two door offers a maximum of 444 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque, all paired out through a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission, rear wheel drive of course. All you have to do to enter for a chance to win is visit www.omaze.com forward slash RR BMW M2 where you can support a great cause like the bobsled skeleton. Omaze has been committed to the goal of supporting the needs of USA bobsled skeleton athletes for three years as they work to achieve sustained excellence in international competition. Unlike most nations, US athletes do not receive any tax dollars nor continuous government funding. Therefore, USA bobsled skeleton athletes depend on private donations and sponsorships to help them win the world stage. So what are you waiting for? For a chance to win this amazing BMW M2 CS and support a great cause, be sure to visit www.omaze.com forward slash RR BMW M2. And now let's get back to the video. So when Genesis was first introduced, the company was struggling a little bit to find their brand identity. And you could really tell that in the design of the vehicles. However, in the last couple of years, Genesis has really found their mojo. Athletic elegance is the theme, of course, with their latest uh, styling development. And as you can see, it really translates well onto the new GV70. Everything that you love about the GV80 is present here, but it also has its own unique look. It doesn't just look like a smaller version of the GV80, which is something that you kind of see in a lot of its European brands. Now this particular one that I'm showing you is the fully loaded 3.5 twin turbo Sport Prestige. So this is the most expensive, most well-optioned model that you can buy. It's painted in this gorgeous shade of Mona Red. It's a $500 upcharge. It's pretty similar to like Mazda's Soul Red Crystal. It's a beautiful shade of red and it goes extremely well with the sport accent themes. Of course, you have the massive crest grille, you have the Genesis wing logo, uh, and you have darker chrome bits on the sport model along with this lower front lip that gives it a more aggressive front fascia. There's an interesting styling element here, of course, with the dual headlights. You have the dual line headlights with the quad beam, full LEDs, you have LED turn signals, uh, some more uh, sport-oriented, more aggressive uh, intake skirts or intakes for the uh, sport models, which give it an aggressive look. One interesting design element here is the hood. If you notice the hood here, the hood has a cut line that literally shows right over the front bumper. Most vehicles have something here that kind of matches the line. Uh, here where it almost looks like it's unfinished but genesis assured me this is the final design of the gv70 it's an interesting look and you don't notice it until you actually come up close to the vehicle let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the styling it definitely looks like a mini bentley in fact it looks better than bentley's current design language especially if you look at the bentega just like just like how i love this on the gv80 it translates really nicely onto the smaller uh, GV70. Now, of course, this is built off of a rear drive platform. So this is, this doesn't share anything with a Hyundai Tucson or a Hyundai Santa Fe. All GV70s are uh, all wheel drive. They don't offer a rear drive version. And you can see it's a relatively long vehicle for the class. Its wheelbase is 113 inches long. Its overall length is 185 inches long. So this is around nine inches shorter than a GV80. So you're going to get that smaller compact proportions that a lot of people like. Looking at the wheels, the wheels are also a subject of controversy. I actually love the wheels. With This is the 21 inch wheel that you get on the sport model. They have these interesting designs in the spokes that mimics the grille design that you find in the crest grille and the lower front skirt. I think it looks great. Some of you have mentioned that you don't particularly like the wheel. Let me know in the comments below what you think. You can see the tires are massive. These are uh, 275 uh, with tires. 
wrapped in 21 inch wheels. The ride quality surprisingly is good. I'll talk about that more in the driving uh, scene. No air suspension is available on the GV70 and you get roughly just under eight inches of ground clearance. So you're not gonna wanna take this off-roading obviously, but uh, you do have relatively decent ground clearance. Now, of course you can see here, the side mirror is not black. I was surprised by that, but I do like the black painted um, roof rails here. You kind of have the dark chrome window trim and my tester has a nice panoramic sunroof that's included on the Sport Prestige. The side profile you can see has a very unique look to it. This doesn't look at all like the GV80, which has a more squared off look. This has a slightly more tapered coupe-like look, which I think translates well. When you look at the rear of the vehicle, you can see the same quad light technology as the front, where you have these dual lines for the full LED tail lights which look good you can see genesis is spelled out in the back in fact i'm out here just outside of new york city and i was surprised at how many people actually stuck or stood up and took notice of this car even in new york city where there's a lot of nice cars everybody kind of looked at this car and they wondered what it was because it just went on sale a couple months ago you can see there's a nice g7 gv70 badge here it shows a 3.5t and the sport model here you can see has its own unique exhaust setup it has a kind of a rear diffuser look for the bumper. If you guys go for the non-sports, you'll have kind of a squared off tailpipes, but these are the massive uh, dual oval ones. You can see my fist almost entirely fits inside there, although it's not actually connected to the muffler. The muffler is actually behind that. It's just a single piece and you have that front splitter. So it's definitely a sporty looking car and it looks like it competes well with something like an Audi SQ5. Now to opening up the trunk, it does have that smart tailgate, which is hands-free, uh, but the button to open the trunk is over here, right under the windshield wiper. And when you open up the trunk capacity, I actually have some luggage in here because I'm uh, carrying stuff for my editor and another, another editor who works for CarBuzz. You can see, look at all the, this luggage back here. Um, there's around 28 cubic feet of space with uh, both the seats up or with the second row up. There's no third row, obviously, but if you fold down the second row seats, Genesis says you get just under 57 cubic feet of space. That is definitely not class leading. I believe a BMW X3 offers around five more cubic feet, but this is definitely more spacious than what you find in the current generation Lexus NX. And then underneath here, you do have a little bit of storage underneath here, and Genesis uh, does offer a temporary spare tire. So before we move on to the interior of the new GV70, I want to first show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the same key that they use on other Genesis products. And just like the larger GV80, you can also access the remote park assist feature. All you have to do to access that is you push and hold this button here to start the car up. When the vehicle starts up, you just push and hold this button right here. You have to be standing relatively close to the car, but it allows you to basically move the vehicle forward and back if you need to squeeze yourself out of a tight parking spot, I can see I can also put the vehicle back. It uses the sensors and cameras, obviously, to keep from hitting things, hitting the wall, hitting pedestrians and whatnot. It's a really great feature to have. It's a great party trick as well. And you can also use the digital key function. This car has the ability, uh, ability to use your phone as a key if you have an Android phone. Obviously, I have an iPhone, so I can't do that. But opening the door and looking at the interior, I want you guys to check out this cabin because this red exterior is complemented by, it looks like a black interior, but this is actually the ultramarine blue. This is a dark blue interior, which really shocked me uh, with the color of this combination. You can see it's got red stitching, it's got red seat belts as well, and the seats they adjust in 16 ways uh, for the uh, driver's side, 12 ways for the passenger. The seats themselves are also heated and ventilated, and the driver's side offers a massaging seat function which is really nice. And if you guys don't like the steering wheel that's in the GV80, this steering wheel you can see is a three spoke design. So it's really cool. The Sport Prestige model also gives you that carbon fiber along the side. You have carbon fiber on the door panels here. You can see the blue is kind of carried over here with lots of metal material trim and such. This is all very, very nice looking. It makes a great first impression. You can see the car actually shut itself off because it shut off the remote park assist. Uh, but I wasn't expecting to like the blue with the red with the contrast, but this interior really stands out in a great way. Now getting inside, you can see the GV70 definitely has a higher, slightly higher step in position than, um, you know, obviously the G70, but it doesn't feel quite as high as I thought I it would. When I shut the door, you can hear the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. The steering wheel here is power tilt and telescoping. And this Sport Prestige model that I'm driving has basically every option you can get. You can see massive 14 inch display here and a 12 inch digital 3D display there. The button to fire up the engine is right here where you'd expect it to be. And you can see the cages do a nice sweep. Apologize for that. The car literally started to blast the music as soon as it started. Um, the gauges do a nice sweep. It's got that 3D instrument cluster. Like I said, you can turn that off. There's something here that watches your face and that's how it tracks. It tracks your face 
um, for the driver awareness and for the 3D cluster because if you uh, move your head, you can literally see the 3D effect from the side, which is an interesting look. But let's talk about the interior because the materials in here are pretty amazing. Even for this segment, this feels a lot nicer than the last Audi SQ5 that I drove, nicer than the BMW X3, and even nicer than the Mercedes to me in terms of the materials. You can see the door panel has this beautiful um, stitching. It's the leatherette stitching with the real, the genuine stitching, real metal trim on the door handles here, softly padded right here, beautiful carbon fiber trim, and the, the uh, window controls are even aluminum. They're one touch for all four. Uh, you have power mirror controls, and this even feels great with the texture. The 16-speaker uh, lexicon stereo also sounds incredible. Um, really, Genesis spared no expense here. Even the this part of the dash here, it's got all genuine stitching, contrasting stitching on this portion. This look here is also really cool with the way they've integrated this kind of oval shape with the climate controls with a digital screen here. And you can see the ventilated and heated seats are all on the screen. It works pretty well, although the cooled seats could be a little colder. Um, I, I found them to be slightly cold, um, but I've tested some other cooled seats that feel a little bit colder than this vehicle. Now looking at the steering wheel, you can see, as I mentioned, if you don't if you don't like the two-spoke wheel on the GV80, you're gonna like this three-spoke wheel that you get on the GV70. Uh, although I will say this metal trim here, it's real metal because I burned myself when it was super hot outside. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. You kind of will touch this area here, but it's got a nice fat uh, grip to the wheel, um, got metal paddle shifters. You have these touch sensitive buttons. You have this nice scrolly wheel here for the audio system. And you can also change and adjust the way this looks. If you want to push this button here, you can kind of, you know, add the driver assistance stuff. That all looks very impressive. And my tester also has the heads up display, uh, which is not the largest in the segment, but it does add a lot of useful uh, information. Now let's talk about this infotainment system real quick. This is the 14 and a half inch touchscreen. It's part of the Genesis system. You can also expand this to be um, a full screen if you'd like, if you go to the actual map display. Uh, going over here to map, you can see you can expand this to be the exact full screen, which is great. Um, it's actually a little too big. If you want, you can push this right here. It'll make it to a split screen. But this is one of the largest in the industry. Uh, it's almost as large as what you're going to find in like a Model Y, which has a 15-inch tablet. This is a 14 and a half inch uh, wide screen, which is great. Although unlike the Tesla, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is not wireless, though. That's one thing that Genesis needs to add is wireless connectivity for the CarPlay and Android Auto. But regardless, you can see it's a snappy, responsive system. You can also use this little scrolly wheel here to access the screen if you'd like, because this is a little bit of a far reach for me. This definitely has a little bit of a learning curve. You can also adjust uh, the different settings in here. This has beautiful ambient lighting where you can change the color. You can see the background is red. or I have the ambient lighting to red. This looks spectacular at night. Um, the seats also have these interesting adjustments where you can go to the seat control here. You can also adjust uh, all your different lumbar settings. It has a special setting here within the seat where it can adjust to your posture. Uh, and then of course you can go here to individual settings that allow you to change everything here. There's just so much customization here that you expect from a luxury brand. This doesn't feel like any of the Hyundai systems that I'm used to. So that's great that Genesis, you know, kind of went their own way with the infotainment system. When I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see it's got a full top-down 360 camera with excellent graphics and resolution. You can even push this button here. You can see it'll give you a exact display of the car where you can kind of scroll around the car. You can actually change the color of the car to represent the color that you bought. Um, obviously, I had, I had to change it to the red color, but they also offer like a nice matte purple color. So that is all very cool, very high end, exactly what I expect from the European brands, but at a far less expensive price. Very little complaints with the infotainment system, aside from the fact that it doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay and it's a little bit of a far reach. Now, coming over here, you can see this is your drive mode selector. It's a little toggle. You can toggle it between a Sport Plus, a Custom, Sport, Comfort and Eco and a Snow. The Sport Plus setting is new. I haven't seen, they, you couldn't find that in the GV80, but it's great to find that in the smaller GV70. We'll of course try the different drive modes later on in the test drive. I love the detail here with this little glass control for the knob, to, the command controller to control that infotainment system and the glass control here for the shifter. You twist it over here to the left to go to reverse, twist it softly to go to neutral, all the way over two clicks to go to drive and then push this P button to go to park. This also lights up at night based on the ambient color lighting that you chose. So very beautiful looking at night and it just makes the details in here just look really expensive and look very high quality. Now you can see here, wireless phone charging pad is over here. You got two USB ports. They are the USB-A instead of the USB-C. Nice size cup holders. Open this up, you can see decent size center console with nice padded area uh, for where you'd rest your elbows. The seats are comfortable and supportive. They also hug you. I love the red seat belts with the red contrasting stitching, the metal trim here. 
the fact that I can adjust the passenger seat from these buttons over here if I need to move it out of the way, which is great. The glove compartment you can see is a bin style. It's damped and slimy with felt. It's also deep. Uh, it's a really, really good size. Um, above me, you can see the headliner is Alcantara microfiber suede. You have uh, LED lighting in the cabin, which is great. Nice frameless rear view mirror, although they don't offer a digital screen rear view mirror, which would be great. Um, big panoramic sunroof, as you can see, which is very dark tinted. I mean, you could close the sunshade if you'd like, but this is one of the darkest tinted you know, shades that I've seen. But overall, this cabin, I'm super impressed. Every bit of the luxury that you get from the GV80 has transported in here, but it still feels roomy. It still feels comfortable. It still feels elegant. It feels a lot more expensive than its price would suggest. And I think that's the reason why I think this interior is one of the nicest that you're going to find in the segment. Now, hopping into the back seat of the GV70, even though this is a smaller vehicle than the GV80, Hyundai says, or Genesis says, that this has roughly 37 inches of legroom back here. 37 inches is a pretty good amount, although you can see there is a tunnel here that takes into the space for the middle passenger. My tester, of course, has its own set of rear seat climate control. You have three level heated seats, but no cooled seats. That's something you can get on the GV80. But you can see there's two power outlets over there, an actual 115 volt. And if I fold this down, you can see there's a nice armrest here. The seats also are covered with the same beautiful soft leather with the two-tone and the red seat belts and the red stitching. And you even had leather stitching on the door panels, real aluminum, real carbon fiber. The one thing I expected was these manual sunshades here. I wasn't expecting to find that. And of course, you have this massive panoramic sunroof that lets in a lot of light. There's the same really nice high quality materials. So even though this is the second row, the materials back here make me feel like I'm sitting in a car that's a lot more expensive. Now, of course, under the massive hood of the GV70, you're going to find a choice of two different powertrains. The base engine is a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. We'll see that engine, of course, in vehicles like the Hyundai Sonata N-Line and the uh, Genesis GV80. That makes 300 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque. The twin turbo V6 is the optional engine here, and this is a pretty powerful engine for the segment. It's a three and a half liter twin turbo V6 with direct injection. It makes 375 horsepower on premium gas and up to 391 pound-feet of torque. That makes it more powerful, of course, than something like the Audi SQ5, although not quite as powerful as the GLC 43 and the BMW X3 M40. M40. It all goes out through an eight-speed automatic transmission. That's a Genesis design transmission. And like I said earlier, H-Track all-wheel drive is going to be standard. There's no rear-wheel drive version of this car, although the all-wheel drive system does have the ability to send up to 100% of the power to the rear, wheel, rear wheels. And on the sport model, you also get things like launch control and a limited slip differential. So this is actually a sporty driving vehicle the way it's set up. Now, fuel economy is rated at 19 in the city, 25 on the highway with the V6. The four cylinder gets 22, 28. And as this one sits, it weighs in at around 4,300 pounds. So it's a little bit lighter than the GV80, yet it has the same power. So you should expect zero to 60 performance, Genesis says, should be around the five second range. And if you guys plan to tow, this will tow a maximum of 3,500 pounds. So I have literally been waiting all year to drive the 2022 Genesis GV70. And Genesis, as you guys know, may be an upstart luxury brand, but the company is killing it with a bunch of their new products. I mean, of course, it started basically with the G70. Uh, then the G90 came out. The GV80 SUV was their first SUV. Loved that vehicle and the redesigned G80. So now that I've driven also basically every model except this one, my bar is set pretty high. My standards are set, set pretty high. My expectations are high because Genesis has been delivering on those um, expectations ever since this brand came out back in 2016. And first impressions are strong. This SUV has a nimbleness, has a luxury feel that basically makes you feel like you're piloting a vehicle that's not, I wouldn't say twice the price, but at the price that this car is, it's probably, it feels like it's worth like another 20 grand. Uh, and this is the top of the line Sport Prestige with the twin turbo V6. So first thing I wanna do, surprisingly, it has launch control. To activate the launch control, you basically just put it into its Sport or Sport Plus setting. You turn off all the nannies and just floor the brake in the accelerator and it'll give you the launch. Let's try it. <laughs> and going slightly uphill, I just got zero to 60 in 5.26 seconds. Remember, this is the top twin turbo V6 with 375 horsepower and 391 pound-feet of torque. And a vehicle that weighs about 500 pounds less than the GV80 um, that it's based on or that it's not based on, that it's it's smaller. Remember, this is a smaller vehicle, but 5.2 is an excellent time. 
uh, to get for a vehicle like this. So I'm very, very impressed with the performance, but I think I could actually do faster because we were going slightly uphill, uphill there. Now, because this is based off of the G70, you feel a certain level of sportiness. This vehicle comes standard with the company's all-wheel drive, but it's a rear-biased all-wheel drive system, so it's gonna add, or it's gonna try to send more power to the rear to give it more of those tail-out shenanigans that we like, you know, in a performance SUV like this. It feels very much akin to the last Audi SQ5 that I drove, although it doesn't quite have the sound. It definitely has the pull and the acceleration, um, and it has the power. This has more horsepower and torque than the Audi, uh, which is nice, and it's also less expensive, but hey, I wanna try another one. Let's go ahead and see on a straighter road here, or on a more level road, what it can do. Launch control active. <laughs> and there I got 4.9 seconds, 4.89 seconds, and I'll take that time. That is a quick SUV. And it's quicker than the last Audi SQ5 that I drove, the Sportback, which did it in around 5.1 seconds. So this is definitely a quick SUV. It doesn't quite have the sound from the exhaust system. I wish the Genesis would do a louder exhaust, but I can't argue with the fact that this has very, very impressive performance for a non like N version of this vehicle. <laughs> and literally you can get the back end to step out like that <laughs> because this vehicle is rear drive biased. Uh, it will let the tail step out and you can feel that it's a rear drive chassis. Unlike the Audi SQ5, I'm gonna keep comparing it to that. This feels a little bit more tail out happy or, or tail happy because of that rear drive chassis. The steering also offers a lot of feedback. It's pretty heavy in this Sport Plus mode. The transmission, this is the eight speed automatic that is a Genesis designed transmission. Does a really great job of holding gears. It comes with these paddles as well, which do a pretty good job of blipping the throttle. <laughs> Although the upshifts could be a little faster. I pulled the paddle and it took a second for it to respond. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the nannies back on because uh, we definitely don't want it to be with it off, but I'll put it back into Sport Plus, which puts the stability control into like a less restrictive setting. It lets you have a little bit more fun. But when you're just kind of cruising along, the ride quality for me is still good. I mean, this one has the 21 inch wheels. I've seen some people complain that the ride is too harsh. They said the same thing about the GV80. And while I guess on some broken pavement, I could see it being a little bit more bumpy, but on this kind of pavement, it feels like I'm gliding on a cloud, honestly. The suspension is, to be honest, a little bit softer than I expected, to, expected it to be. The BMW X3 M40i feels a little bit more stiff than this. The BMW also feels slightly more quicker because BMW tends to underrate their straight sixes. This has a much better ride quality, however, than the Mercedes AMG GLC 43 and the BMW. Um, this is akin to the Audi's ride quality, but it has way more performance. It just feels like it slots a nice middle ground between the accelerative performance of the BMW and the Audi or the Mercedes, but the comfortness of the Audi. Ooh, really great performance. Oh, love the quickness of this SUV. I mean, yes, they do offer it with a four-cylinder turbo, and that's probably all the engine you need. I haven't had a chance to drive it in this vehicle yet, but that one weighs around 200 pounds less than the V6. But it's got seats that also hug you a little bit more. This is the Sport Prestige version, so it's for an extra five grand, you have these additional bolstering in the seats. It actually tugs at you a little bit more when you have it in sport mode, and then when you switch it out of sport mode, it actually will release you a little bit. Uh, you can feel that as I go into the comfort drive mode here. But when you have it in comfort setting, you can feel the steering gets a lot lighter. Everything kind of just tailors back. The brakes get a little bit less grabby. I feel like I'm driving an expensive European car here. That's the cool thing about this vehicle. But let's just try accelerating here from a stop. I'm not even gonna do zero to 60. I'm just gonna floor it. Definitely wanna use the launch control. Oh, <laughs> still fast though. Ooh. <laughs> I am super impressed. This beats this beats all the other S German SUVs that I've driven. Obviously, there's a new Lexus NX that's coming out. I'll be driving that next month, but it's still a front drive pl uh, platform. This is probably one of the most well-rounded in the luxury space that I've driven. It also doesn't make you sacrifice, you know, 
the thing about this car is you don't feel like you're sacrificing a lot. You don't feel like you're sacrificing interior space. You're not sacrificing handling. You're not sacrificing comfort. You're definitely not sacrificing luxury. It just feels like the only thing you might be sacrificing is the name. Yes, Genesis doesn't have the same, you know, cachet as a Porsche, as an Audi, as a BMW, as a Mercedes, but you can look past that name and this car actually attracts a lot of attention. Just having it for the last couple of days, I noticed everybody was looking at this car, especially in this beautiful, beautiful bright red exterior with this dark navy blue interior. I didn't think I would like a red and blue combination, but I like it in this car, that's for sure. And I'm struggling. I'm honestly struggling to find things that I don't like about it. I mean, other than the fact that the name is not what you'd like and, or is not as high end as those German brands. And some of the tech definitely has a higher learning curve, but regardless, I'm sitting here getting a massage. The seats are heated and cooled. They're comfortable and supportive. I'm just in awe. Now, just driving the vehicle in comfort mode right now, I'll just accelerate normally like most people would. You feel plenty of torque from the V6. The transmission also is really, really smooth shifting. Um, the engine doesn't really make any noise either in this mode. You can kind of tailor back the sound profiles. It does augment the noise a little bit through the speakers. It amplifies the V6 character. Um, but when everything is in its comfort setting, it feels like a proper luxury car. The ride gets a little bit more comfortable because of those adaptive dampers. It's also very quiet in here. I, I hear very little wind, road, and engine noise. Uh, and you know, you can see out of this car really well. Visibility is fantastic. I love the fact that the windows are large. You have the big side mirrors. And then of course, with Genesis, you get all their driver assistance is standard. You don't have to pay extra for it like you do with the German brands to get things like adaptive cruise control. You have to usually spec up an option package for it. But with this car, <laughs> actually it still tripped the tires there a little bit. It just feels so good. And, and when you do want to use the driver assistance tech, it's got their highway driving assist uh, two. It's got full speed range adaptive cruise. It's got lane keep assist. It all works really well. It's among the best in the industry. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't do automatic lane changing for you like Mercedes would. And it doesn't have uh, a true like hands-free operation on the highway. I assume Genesis may be working on that. Uh, and I guess the fuel economy isn't the best. This is rated at 19 in the city, 25 on the highway. The Germans are definitely better, specifically BMW. This is right on par with the Audi SQ5. In my week's worth of testing, I've been averaging around 17 MPG in mostly city driving. On the highway, it will do 25, 24 MPG. I imagine for those of you who drive a little bit more conservatively, you should be able to do better. But man, if you guys don't need to have electric, if you're not interested in getting electric, I mean, that's really another gripe. There's no a hybridized version. There's no plug-in hybrid. There's no all electric version of this car. Genesis is kind of taking their time and they're doing a really impressive gas car. But among the gas cars, this is now my favorite. I would easily pick this over the BMW, over the Mercedes and over the Audi. I mean, it's a pretty close race, but really it comes down to the overall package and the fact that this car gives you a better warranty, you know, better you know, concierge service. You don't even have to go to the dealership and it's a much better value. This is around five to $10,000 less expensive than its European rivals. So even though Genesis may be late to the small SUV party, after spending a full week with their newest crossover, I am very impressed with the overall package here. I mean, I've spent some time with a lot of its competitors, the Acura RDX, the Mercedes GLC, the Audi Q5 or SQ5, and of course the BMW X3. And what Genesis offers here is a lot to like. It's basically the whole package. You get one of the best warranties in the segment. You get styling that really stands out in a segment that's full of nicely styled vehicles. And you get an interior that has all the latest tech that you want, has all the latest luxury. It has plenty of room, great driver assistance tech. And as you guys saw from the driving scene, plenty of power. I was not expecting to get zero to 60 in around 4.8 seconds with this car. So it is quicker than the last Audi SQ5. And that's what makes this car so enticing. Even though it's not quite as sporty as the SQ5 or the GLC or the X3, it does have all the luxury and technology aspects that you really want at a price that far undercuts its German competitors. This car starts at around $41,000 plus destination at around 12 grand if you guys want the V6. I would highly go for the V6 just because I like the additional performance. My tester, of course, has the Sport Advance and the Sport Prestige package. That's adding roughly another $9,000 to the price. 
add it all in and you're looking at an as total price of around $64,000, which yes, it is expensive, more expensive than something like a Lexus NX or an Acura RDX, but the Acura and the Lexus don't offer an engine that would compete with this. And if you compare it to its German rivals, this car seriously undercuts it by about five to $10,000, which makes it a very enticing option. And even though Genesis is late to the party, this is now one of my top picks if you guys are looking for a new compact luxury crossover SUV. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Genesis GV70. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.